You can return to any previous point in your game and start a new game from that point. This game branching feature is useful for isolating effects in the model. In other words, when you want to repeat just one part of a game to try a different approach, for instance trying a different combination of employees for a particular task, to see how the outcome differs. Branching a game can be done in two different ways, using the right-click menus on the explanatory tool graphs, that is the object, action, and composite graphs, or using the multiple timelines browser, which will be covered in a moment. To branch a game from a graph, right-click on any point in a graph and choose Start New Game From Here. It will then prompt you to give a name to that particular game, and the new branch will begin from the clock tick in the graph that you clicked on, in this case clock tick 204. Any other running games you currently have open will still be accessible as you also run the new branch. Try to keep the number of simultaneous games to about 5 or less, or else the performance will suffer significantly. As a simple example of how branching a game might be useful, let's say you want to see if using a design environment tool is worth it by seeing how much it actually helps the design process. So let's go back to our game. And for simplicity's sake, let's just assign everyone to designing without purchasing a design tool first. Now we'll step time forward until the creation of the design is complete. And as you can see the percent completeness of the design is increasing indicating that they are working on creating it. And as is usual in the waterfall game, the employees go through their cycles of getting tired, taking breaks, and resuming work once they regain their energy. So we're going to keep moving forward until the design document is complete. Okay. So we see that at the completion of design without the tool, we're at clock tick 841. Now let's go back to the explanatory tool and let's generate an action graph that includes the create design action that we just performed, indicated by this yellow line here. And let's start a new game just before we started the create design action. We'll call this one design with tool. Okay. Now let's fast forward here to the end of requirements correction. Okay, they've told me that they're finished correct in the requirements document. And now let's first purchase the design tool. Okay, and then again we'll assign everyone to designing, but this time using the tool. and we'll fast forward again until the design is complete. And you may already notice that it is moving faster than it did without the tool. Okay, now at the completion of design with the tool, we are at clock tick 694. If we look back at our other game, this is the other game without the tool, it took all the way until clock tick 841 to finish design. So clearly, in the design with tool game indicated by its name up here in the title bar, the tool speeds things up significantly. 
Now let's also see if the tool made any difference in how many errors were introduced into the, into the design. To do that, let's go back to the original game. And let's generate an object graph for the design that includes the error information about the design document. So we can see that at the completion of the design without the tool, the design document was about slightly over 50% erroneous, indicated by this green line here. Now let's go to our game design with tool and let's generate the same graph. So in the Designing With tool, we can see that the design document only ended up at about 19% erroneous at the completion of design creation. So the design tool does seem to be worth it since it significantly speeds up design and causes it to be significantly more correct. In order to manage multiple parallel games, SimC includes a multiple timelines browser, which is accessible through the multiple timelines browser button in the explanatory tool. As you can see, this tool allows you to see a graphical depiction of all your parallel game branches that you've started. A solid line represents a game that is still open. A dashed line represents a game that has been closed and a number at the end of a line indicates the score given for that game. So for instance, if we go and end our design with tool game by delivering the product to the customer, we get a score of 30, which now shows up here at the end of the representative line. And if we then close the design with tool game, the line becomes dashed, meaning it's closed and no longer accessible. For open games represented by a solid line, left-clicking on that line brings that game to the front. Right-clicking on a line gives you the option of starting a new branch from that game. Branching from the multiple timelines browser works in exactly the same way as when you do it through an explanatory tool graph. You'll be prompted to give the branch a name, and then it will start a new game.